In the last video, we got our site off to a great start. We created the layout using Twitter Bootstrap, learned about Kendo UI layouts and views, and we skimmed the surface of the Kendo UI router. In this video, we are going to get the Kendo UI editor hooked up so that we can edit the content. First, we are going to edit the content.html file in the templates folder. We need to have a spot in the DOM to hold the Kendo UI editor. Because I want you to be able to edit what I call the title area and the body area separately, we are going to create them as two different editable regions. First, let's create a region for the title. Inside of content.html, you'll see a div tag that has its data bind set equal to value title. This section basically says, hey, content model. Give me the value of the title property and put it here in my DOM. We are going to leave that functionality alone and we are going to expand on the capabilities of the div by giving it an ID equal to title zone. Now find the next div that has data-bind equal value colon contents. And this one is just like the title zone, except it uses the content property from the content model. Now give its div an ID equal to content zone. We could use data dash attributes to fully configure the Kendo UI editor, but it really makes the HTML markup look like crap. So this is handled in the content.js file. So now that we have the DOM ready, I want to get the Kendo UI editor secure. So if you open the user.js file in the scripts models folder and locate the login user function, you will see in the area I have highlighted that if the user details role is equal to this big long crazy key, that means that the user is an admin and we set the property is admin equal true. No, doing this by itself is not securing the admin area, but the next part will help pull everything together. Let's open navigation.js in the scripts models folder and go to the load home function. Now in the section highlighted, notice what it says. Content model dot load editor. Well, by the name of the function, we are loading the editor, right? Well, that is a partially correct answer. Now, we also call the same function in the load about function. You will include this call for every page that gets a content editor and uses the content.htm for its template. Let's open content.js in the scripts models folder. Now, let's locate the load editor function and take a closer look at it. First, to start off, we create two variables, one for the title editor and the second for the content editor. And they are both set to the title zone and content zone DOM elements respectively. The part that follows the jQuery selector dot data Kendo editor says, hey, Kendo UI, create me a Kendo UI editor object using the DOM element XYZ. As long as the jQuery selector locates the element, Kendo UI will then create the widget and place it in the DOM element. Moving on down the code, you will see that we put that isAdmin property to use. We check to see that the person accessing the page is an admin. Then we are going to configure the editor. For the title editor, we first check to see if the editor has already been loaded. If it has, we just move on. If not, then we set up a fairly basic toolbar and some events that will trigger different UI elements when we do something with the editor. For the content editor, we do the same stuff, except this time we build out the full toolbar. Finally, if the user is not an admin, we set a property can edit equal false. And then if we have the editors loaded into memory, we call the destroy method to clean up memory and remove the events. In this section, we covered adding an inline content editor, editor toolbars, and how you can secure the page so that everyone can't edit your content. Next, we will look at how to get the view and bind it to the model and how we get data into the content.htm file. 